Are home prices going to cool as we move into the winter and early next year? And how about mortgage rates? They're on their way up, like we've been talking about the last couple of weeks. And throw into that 30-year high inflation. What does it all mean? And what's going to be the likely impact on the real estate market? That's what we're going to cover in this month's Real Estate Market Update. Hi, this is Andrew with the Andrew Smith team. And this month for November, we're going to look at those three items. We're going to particularly focus on home prices as it's been something that's got a lot of people concerned. Where are we at? Where is it going to go? And the honest truth is, Different forecasts are going to do different things. Nobody knows for certain, but what we're going to cover today is some of the leading indicators to try and give you the information that you need in order to make the best decision for you, because that's really all that matters. I'm not trying to convince you one way or another here. I'm just trying to share the information I have with you so that you can make an, an informed decision that isn't just based on the headlines. It's based on the actual data. And to do that, I'm going to start by sharing my screen as we're going to talk about home price appreciation. All right. So as I mentioned, home prices have been going up, as we all know, right? It's been an extremely difficult market for buyers. And one of the reasons home prices have been going up so fast is the fact that interest rates, mortgage rates have been so low. They have helped fuel the demand. What we've basically been experiencing for most of the year has been an imbalance in supply and demand. It's not only real estate, it's anytime there's an imbalance between supply and demand, prices go up. Just look at all of the other consumable goods. Look at the price of eggs, milk, you know, windows, doors, gasoline, a lot of different things that are going on right now. But home prices are what we're going to focus on here. And for a lot of the year, earlier on in the spring, early part of summer, almost all of the country was having home price appreciation in excess of 20% a year. That is obviously not sustainable. It cannot continue that way. You can't have a situation where home prices are exceeding wage growth by more than four times. It's not going to work. And if you've seen any of the prior videos and you, you've seen some of the material I've put out, I've been saying as we move later into the year, expect home prices to moderate. And that's exactly what we are now finally starting to see. So on average, when we look at this is August numbers, the U.S. overall was running at an 18.5% year-over-year price appreciation. Everywhere else, um, or not everywhere else, but the vast majority of the country has now fallen under that 20% annual price appreciation. So the Pacific Mountain and the South Atlantic regions are the only areas that are still currently trending above 20% per year. And this is the pace of appreciation. It's been accelerating every single month so far in 2021. You can see here on this chart when we started in January, and then we went back to February, March, April, and it reached its peak here in August. But you can see that the amount of the year-over-year -year appreciation was starting to slow, starting in June. And we are seeing that across the board. Here's another graph that actually explains this just a little bit better. So this here shows year-over-year -year home price appreciation as calculated by FHFA, CoreLogic, and the S&P Case-Shiller Index. And as you can see in all three of these, the, the line is starting to flatten. So this line right here is flattening out, which is a good thing, right? That means that the year-over-year -year pace of appreciation is starting to taper off. Now, it doesn't mean that we are going to see prices decrease, okay? We are going to see decelerating 
appreciation. And that can get confusing, especially if you see that in the headline. What it's basically saying is if we have decelerating price appreciation, rather than homes appreciating at an annual rate of 15, 16, 18, 20% a year, that number is going to come back down. And currently right now, it depends on which forecast you actually look at. They're forecasting that to drop off to somewhere between four and 7% in 2022. And the reason that they're still expecting prices to increase is we still have this massive imbalance between supply and demand. You've got millennials, which are the largest generation coming into prime home buying age. And there continues to be a lot of activity out there. Homes that we just listed for sale in the last week here in, in mid-November are still getting a tremendous amount of activity and multiple offers. Not as many offers that we're seeing just a few months ago, but you're still seeing multiple offers and heavy buyer activity across the board. Now, one of the benefits, if you already own a home, of home price appreciation is there has been tremendous equity gains. Right? And those equity gains are important because there's been a lot of talk about what foreclosures and forbearance. And we've been saying, I don't think you're going to see a lot of foreclosures. It's just not there. You're starting to see headlines that says foreclosure starts are way up. Of course they are. There was a moratorium in place for over a year. Of course foreclosure starts are way up. But they're not way up compared to historical norms. We have foreclosures each and every month, every year in good markets and in bad. And right now that trend is not there of a bunch of new foreclosures that are beyond what we would expect to see. As a matter of fact, Adam Data reported in the third quarter, 39.5% of all mortgaged homes in the United States have at least 50% equity, right? That's a lot of equity. What has actually happened in many of the cases, even with some of those homes in forbearance, is that because prices have been going up so rapidly, even if someone wasn't paying their mortgage and the amount that they weren't paying was being added to their mortgage balance, chances are they still gained more equity in the course of the year, even with those missed payments being added on, right? So if you, you know, to summarize that, basically you could have not paid your mortgage for a year. The moratorium has now ended. You are actually in trouble and need to sell. And in that year, you gained equity because of the pace appreciation. So that's actually worked to a benefit for many people. The question is going to become is how is this supply imbalance going to be corrected? And the builders are going flat out. You know, we're starting to see a lot more inventory here in North Texas, um, and that's helping a great deal. All right, so there's a, uh, a couple other screens I want to show you to actually compare the local markets that I work in. All right, so this first one right here, I'm looking at Frisco, Texas. Now, I want to point out, as you just saw from some of the numbers I was putting out, they're going back to August. And, and that's pretty much the lag in the numbers that you see, you see reported in the media all the time. These reports that I do here are updated weekly. This is actually weekly information. And I'm not gonna go through the entire report, but I do wanna point out a couple of key features because there's some leading indicators on here that can give us an idea or a glimpse, if you like, into what's likely to happen in the months ahead. So first and foremost, I'm going to put a link to this report in the description of the video below, but you can search any zip code or any city in the entire country. So if you'd like to get an idea on what the market looks like in your neighborhood, please do so. Go ahead and take a look at this, type in your city and your zip code. All right, so first and foremost, really quickly, I want to point out this market action index. Okay, this market action index right here, if you think about it, it's a down and dirty, quick and simple way to gauge the market. It's like a speedometer. The further to the right, the higher the number, the stronger the market is for sellers. It's, it's the stronger the market is or the bigger the imbalance between supply and demand. 
So right now here in Frisco, Texas, our, we're looking at a 78 on the indicator. Last month, we were at an 81. So it's down slightly. Okay, earlier in the year over the summer, we were in the mid 90s, right? So it's definitely cooled compared to what it was. I should point out that anything over 30 is considered the market that is more in favor of sellers. All right, so all I really wanna point out on this is there's one here, price decreased. This is the number of listings that has seen a price reduction. Now, price reductions are a part of every market always. And where you are in the country depends on what's normal for your market. For the most part, if we're gonna look at averages, somewhere right around 35 to 45% of the listings will receive a price reduction before they go under contract. Some markets average a little bit more, some markets average a little bit less. Here in Frisco right now, we're at 14%. That's very low. That indicates that the market is still very strong. When you see the percentage of price decreases going up, that usually indicates sellers that may have priced their home ahead of the market, thinking where it was going to go. And buyers are saying, we don't think so. The home is just flat out not worth that. We're not paying it, no matter how few homes there are for sale. We do see that a lot. But in this particular case, only 14% are having to reduce their price in order to get that property under contract. Here's interesting, price increased 15%. So why would a price get increased? Well, there's a couple of different reasons. One is it may have been a property that went under contract, had multiple offers. The offers may have all been above the list price. And the first buyer backed out for whatever reason, may have changed their mind, may have moved on to another property, didn't reach an agreement with the seller on repairs, whatever the reason is. And 15% of the properties that were coming back on the market have actually raised price before going active again, relative to what it was listed for before. And also the relisted number, 2%, that's really low again. Okay, so a property would get relisted. That number will be higher if you see a lot of investor activity. They buy property at a certain price, go ahead and rehab the property, then relist it at a higher price. Okay, so that's a property that might get relisted. So we're not seeing a great deal of relisted properties in the market right now. All right, so if I scroll down here, this is just showing the median list price, right? So you can see the only thing I want to point out here as you can see right in this area since about June, the pace of appreciation has definitely flattened out. This is how you can see where it is in your market, okay? So you can kind of see this is going back three years. So you can see over the last few months that the pace of appreciation has definitely flattened out compared to what we experienced in the latter half of 2020 and the beginning of 2021. Also, I've mentioned a few times on here that inventory, one of the reasons prices is going up is the imbalance between supply and demand. So this is the Frisco market when we're looking at inventory. We can go all the way back here to the third week of November, 2018. And you can see on the, the seven day average, there were 825 homes for sale in the city. Okay, come all the way down right here, 133. Okay, so the population of the city has grown tremendously in the last three years, but the amount of homes for sale is near rock bottom. This right here, you can see it's been falling consistently, is why you're seeing prices go up. I'm going to flip over really quick to Temecula, where my team also operates in Southern California. Move myself over just a little bit. Very similar market action index to what North Texas is seeing here at 69. That actually increased one point from 68 last month. Okay, but you can see here the difference is look here, number of price decreases is 30%. Okay, that's still below the historical norm for this particular market. You can see here 30% price decreases, 8% of how to price increase. Okay, you could see the price increases in the North Texas market was higher than the prices decreased. 
And again, only 3% of properties are being relisted. So this is showing an incredibly strong market overall. And again, right here, you can see as well, since about May, the median list price has been relatively flat. Overall price, selling price has still been going up, but the median list price is remaining flat, unlike the big jumps we were seeing here. So these are all indications of a cooling real estate market. And that is what we're seeing overall, not just here, but in many other areas of the country. So again, I invite you to look at your own community, your zip code, your city, to see how things are working there. Now, at the beginning, I also mentioned inflation. Inflation is at a 30-year high. Now, the Fed has been saying that we're having its transitionary inflation is what they've been calling it due to the supply chain problems, right? Due to the fact that the goods are hard to come by, they're sitting on ships off the coast um, and we haven't had the, the trucking and we haven't had the, uh, the logistical support in place to get these products moved where we need them to be moved. That argument is starting to fall on deaf ears for some due to the fact that the inflation level is higher than expected and lasting longer than expected. So what's the likely impact that's going to have on home prices and the real estate market? Well, if inflation stays high, the Fed's gonna raise rates quicker than what they may have intentionally planned. As they raise interest rates, they'll do that in order to curtail in the inflation that we're seeing in other parts of the, of the economy. If mortgage rates go up quicker than expected, that will continue to put downward pressure on home prices, right? So as more and more supply becomes available, that's going to help balance things out. And if mortgage rates go up, it's going to make homes less affordable. So people that previously qualified to buy a $500,000 home may now only qualify for four fifty, dollars right? So all of that works you know, hand in glove together. We're going to have to watch this very closely to see what happened. Right now, there are not any indications that it's going to cause prices to tumble. And if anyone out there thinks we're about to hit 2008 again, I'd love to see the data because we're not seeing it at all. I do think that we're going to continue to see the pace of appreciation flatten and we're not going to see the runaway price increases that we have, which will mean that the market will start to return to normal. There aren't going to be bidding wars on every single home. You're not going to have to write these crazy offers, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60,000 plus over list price. All of that will settle down. And so hopefully this helps as I share this information each and every week. If you'd like to get updated and be informed when new information comes out, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and hit the little bell icon so you'll be notified when I post a new video. And if you have any questions whatsoever or have something that you'd like me to answer for you, please don't hesitate to reach out. I can always be reached at 888-447-9650.